Last night I was asked to be a guest for CAS TV. It's a YouTube and they also do podcasts and they did an Instagram live. And one of the hosts of the show asked me what I thought was contributing to people getting in these relationships that are so, so bad and so toxic, but yet they stay in them, like they think it's the normal. And I think a lot of this has to do with who people are listening to. A lot of people are giving advice, coaches, coaches that have, are basically untrained and have gone through a divorce and then are going to try and help you through a divorce or people that are just influencers and they're because they do it and they have a big brand name they they tell you to do it and if you're a person young person or even an older person and you feel lost and you've never really you don't know who you are you don't have self-awareness I can see how easy it is. You want to take that advice because everybody wants to think that there's like a plan, a way you know, a way you can check stuff off. In reality, it's really hard because once you start getting intimate with someone, it those hormones blind you to what's going on. And a lot of children grew up as adults in families that were not good mentors or those relationships were traumatized. So what feels normal to them is really not normal. And in fact, they have to be aware that when something feels too good or too comfortable, it could be repeating a pattern from their parents that was very unhealthy. So what does an emotionally normal person look like? And are like when you're in a relationship with one and you start feeling like, is this even normal? Is it normal? Or is it something you heard or you watched or some Kardashian speaking out? This is normal. This is what you should do. Because a lot of people that are powerful in the media are not licensed in psychotherapy. They don't work with clients. They don't carry a license that holds them accountable. They don't get continuing education in their field of psychotherapy. And those people are giving just as much advice, if not more, than people who are truly professionals and do this for a living. Today, I wanna go through five things that pretty much guarantee you that you're in a relationship with someone emotionally healthy because it's not easy to see. And many times people will hook you. They'll come into a relationship. They'll be the perfect model of a person until they realize they've got you and you're ready to settle down with them. And then they'll start showing their true colors. And that's a terrible feeling if you feel like you were betrayed or led astray with this person who in actuality is very toxic and dishonest in their in who they are as a person. An emotionally healthy person will listen more than they talk. And I don't mean just be quiet. I mean truly sit with you and listen. They want to understand and they don't just passively listen. They listen with the idea of being curious, asking you, asking you how that made you feel, asking you where, what your plan is now. People who are good listeners usually are extremely emotionally healthy. Secondly, they ask for things they want. They're instead of getting upset when you don't provide what they feel they need. So a person who is emotionally healthy is going to advocate. They're going for themselves. They're going to have a voice. They're not going to hint. They're not going to play passive aggressive games. They're not going to say, you should know you've been with me a long time. They don't assume. They basically are very confident in themselves and they say, I need this to feel loved, or I would like it if we could do this in our relationship because I think it will help it grow. And they're able to bring that to the table and tell you like I'm telling you now. They're direct. And when you see that in a person, that's a really healthy sign. And you want that for a potential partner in a relationship. Um, 
they talk about the things they fear in their life. They, they aren't, um, they're here to live the experience and they don't shame or blame others. They're not judgmental. It's more that they are so transparent with their, with their fears that their fears basically aren't scaring them so that they have to cover them up or lie about them. When you meet somebody emotionally healthy, they are very, um, very reluctant to get defensive or to blame another person. They're not looking at other people that way. They're really consumed with their own fears and the, the way they react because of those fears. And they're honest about it. Like they can be vulnerable. If you're talking to someone who can be vulnerable about what they're afraid of or what they're not good at or what they're weak about, this takes a lot of courage and confidence and trust. It means they're wired, they're emotionally healthy people. It's a very good sign. Fourthly, they enjoy the silence between the two of you. They don't need drama. They don't need excitement. They don't stir stuff up or try to get you engaged in a conflict so that they can pin you down or make you feel a certain way. They're basically, when the two of you are quiet and calm, they're very content. They like that. And that means that they have the pace of the relationship figured out, that they're, they're so healthy, they don't need the highs and lows to get excited about. Their, their excitement comes from this good feeling that you're connected with someone that can accept your calm and your, quiet, your quietness as much as they can accept the excitement and the adventures that the two of you have in a relationship. And lastly, they accept present circumstances as they are. They're not trying to blame somebody for the situation they're in. They're not looking for who's at fault or trying to get revenge or punishment. They're accepting. Doesn't mean they like it. Doesn't mean they're always positive, but it means they accept it. When you accept something, you have a resilience. You realize this is part of life. It doesn't only happen to me. I, I might have been careless or I might have done this differently had I known, but this is what I've got. And so because of their attitude, it doesn't make you all anxious or crazy trying to join them in this feud against somebody else. They're not going after somebody else. They realize that this, is, this unfortunate situation is part of life and today it happens to them. Very emotionally healthy. Because of that, they don't react to everything and they're survivors and they can take care of themselves. They're practicing resilience and that's what it looks like.